90, it's 94 knots. How high is it going to go? We're about to land this like a helicopter. Hello everyone, welcome to Sacramento, California. We're at Sacramento International Airport today, KSMF, doing a flight down to Burbank. And I want to give a thanks to Live to Ride 49 for the route suggestion. A lot of you wanted Burbank, so well, we decided to do this one. I went with this one from my hometown out to Burbank, and I'll be doing the others you suggested as well. And of course, that is going to be in this long-awaited 737-700 by PMVG for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can't wait to get going in this. This is one of my favorite aircraft of all time, and it's one I've wanted in Microsoft Flight Sim from the very beginning. And I can't believe the day is here. It's almost surreal to have this sitting in this simulator, being able to look at it. So we got the aircraft all set up. This is what the cockpit looks like. It's uh, pretty nice. Got the head tracking going so we can give you uh, a nice look around. But look at that fluffy seat of sheepskin and all oh, its gory. The cockpit is pretty clean. Uh, maybe somebody will be able to mod it with some, some dust and scratches and dirt. Looks like it's right out of the factory. Uh, but still, the lighting with this sim, it looks so amazing to, to have this sitting in the Microsoft Flight Sim environment. But I got the aircraft all set up. I'm trying to trim off as much time as I can in this. Sorry I couldn't stream it. This is kind of the best I could do doing this flight and uh, chopping it up and getting it out to you with all the good parts at least. So let's go ahead and, and get this thing going because I cannot wait any longer. We're going to get our aft fuel pump on for the left and we're going to start the APU. Let's head outside to see what that sounds like. All right, we got the APU going. So uh, let's go ahead and switch over to the APU generators. Turn on that APU bleed. If I can get the click spots. All my click spots are offset a little bit, and it's not the PMDG's fault. This, is, this happens in every aircraft I fly. I don't know why. I have to really zoom in to get them, and it's... Uh, it's not always ideal to have that. All right, jetway is moving back and the tug is about to approach to get us pushing back. I like how it went, uh, it went right through the tug there, sorry. Sorry, tug driver, for losing your head. I actually didn't check and see if this actually has pushback on its own. Uh, I know it used to, and the, the other PMDG did, but we're just using uh, the pushback helper app. Uh, the fuel pumps can come on, and the hydraulics. We also need to check if that yaw damper's on. Yep, it's on. Get on the window heat. All right, rolling back. Just going to do a straight pushback for today. Again, these click spots. You're going to hear me pissing and moaning about these click spots all day. There we go. Off. 
Alright, let's get it. Engine start switch over the ground. Wow, she is spooling up fast. Alright, wow. Number two engine is started. Let's go ahead and work on the number one. And uh, we've pushed back a little too far. We'll just leave it there. I'm glad the tug has stopped. Okay, set the parking brake. Get over to the main generators. And we'll get the APU bleed off. Isolation valve up to auto. And the pack's back on. No, we don't want to start the APU. We want to turn it off. There we go. Get the runway turn off lights, taxi light on, engine start switch to continuous, anti collision light. And with all that, we are ready to roll, baby. Logo light, too, you yeah. know. Oh, it looks good. All right. That's one thing, though, about the pushback. I just wish. I love X-Planes better pushback. It's the best uh, way to do it I've ever seen. And it just makes so much sense that you can just draw the path. And the tug will go there without having to worry about it. But nevertheless, we are on our way to runway 16 left. I believe it's still 16 left. See, I, it always goes back and forth. I see the sim calling at 17 left, 16 left. But I think the published. Actually, let me check the window is still open here. No, actually, it's 1-7. Oh, okay, so it just uh, must have changed. What does that over time? Is it just like like poles shifting and, and, and stuff over time? Like, what makes that shift? Because it was 1-6, and then uh, McClellan Airport, which is lined up with, with uh, SAC International, I think they still use 1-6. But it's officially 1-7 now. Gotta get used to that. Now the taxi in this thing is a little bit jerky. I think they're going to probably have to tweak that a bit. Because everybody's kind of complaining about it. So you have to get used to that. I was kind of expecting it already. Because I'd heard it's that way. So you just have to be really careful. I'm not using a tiller or anything. I'm just using the pedals. I guess we're on. I never knew what they call this departure. I think it's the. I think it, they're going for like Faith Hill or something like that. Sometimes you you wonder what the. What we're abbreviating here. Okay, we're almost at the runway now. Like I said, I gotta, I gotta chop up a lot of stuff to just make this video viewable. So we're gonna turn the lights on now, the, the uh, landing lights, and we'll get the strobe now. All the way up, all right. And the wing light. Hit the button twice. Let them know we're about to take off. And that way we're just ready. So we can just turn and 
kick off. Don't have to stop or anything. 18 minutes since we left the gate. And everything's set. Flex 5 departure. RTO is on. Auto throttle, LNAV, VNAV. Let's go ahead and reset the fuel. Check it. it looks good. This is an interesting piece of concrete. This is uh, looks wet. They sprayed it down. I don't know. This is a free Sacramento on flights in about two. It's actually pretty good. Kind of, kind of happy with it. They got the the terminal and everything looking really good. It would just be nice to have some Southwest planes at the gates. Actually, I'm so sick of looking at these these yellow default planes and then the the neo the default white neo. guys excited because I'm excited. Put it in the cart right as it was going on sale. I think I caught it about a minute or two after it went on sale. I still had to wait 30 minutes for my email to get the, the code. But got it done, got it installed before we uh, the rest of us broke the broke their system. I'd have, I would have loved to have watched the money counter as they were people were buying this. I wonder how much they did in sales. That would be cool if they disclosed that. I just, I'm just curious how many people bought it. I mean, I'm sure it broke records for them. I, I don't think anybody has ever anticipated a pay, plane this much. I mean, it, this plane was anticipated back when it first came out for FSX, but there weren't that many people like there are today getting ready to fly this. Alright, lining up on 1-7 left. We're gonna start speeding up to 40% N1, and then we're gonna hit that toga button, and then we're gonna blast off out of here. sensitive. Got to be gentle with her. Clean up the flaps to get that gear and auto brake in a moment. As we depart over the Natomas neighborhood of Sacramento. Alright, gear locked. Auto brake off. Just do it. We got one hour down to Burbank. This is amazing. Man. This is this is just so crazy to finally have this.
Alright, hope you enjoyed those shots from our climb out. We are about to level off at 39,000 feet today. We'll be at cruise for about 25, 30 minutes, and then we'll be back on our way down. Climb was pretty flawless. Level off right where it should. So they seem to got these systems going first try. That is constantly uh, an issue with aircraft releases. They they rarely come out with the flight management system working appropriately. But this one seems to be working. We'll see on the the scent though. That's the real test. Which is right now, coming up on top of descent. Now, like I said, I gotta speed this all up or it's, it's already gonna be too long of a video, but I just wanna keep in the good stuff. So we're crossing the top of descent now. We have it set to 22,000 feet. And she is heading down like she should. Looks good. I mean, it's just keeping it right on the profile from the start, at least. Now, of course, you always have to manage that with drag at times, so it's not always going to be perfect. So we're coming through 15,000 feet now over the mountains. It's getting a little bumpy out here. And we're going to start taking control of the speed ourselves. Uh, but all the way down so far, it is flawless. It is doing exactly what I'm asking it to do. I'm going to uh, tune up our, our approach altitude there, 3,700. Now, I have sped ahead here, and I uh, actually had to pause it for a little bit. But I paused it with the menu, and I did not know when you do that. The time ticks still, and the fuel burns. So had I known that, I don't know, it's this active pause, I, how do you even prevent that? I would have thought in the menu it wouldn't do that. So I changed the time, but I'm not going to do anything about the fuel. I was just wondering um, if you wondered why the fuel burned so much. That's what happened. Uh, but we're going to keep this clip here. We are. This is the final approach. We're about... 15 miles, not nah, less than that, like 12 miles out. The gear is coming down. We're going to start configuring the flaps. And we're on our final approach in the Burbank now. Final speed is going to be 136 knots. Pink Diamond is moving on down. Line up with. We're doing the ILS for runway eight. Perfect, though, man. I'm telling you, like, I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with aircraft releases, but they don't usually release this perfect. And there are things wrong with it. You know, the taxi is a little, little sensitive, and, and I'm sure there's other things I haven't even discovered yet. But for the flight management system, it Pretty good. Pretty good for a, a day one release. Alright, we are locked on the glide path now. Coming down on in approach mode. So the spoilers are on, the auto brakes are set to two, our flaps are configured, the gear is down, three green. We get our heading bug lined up with the course heading as well. Looking real good, real good. See, flying is much easier when the plane just does what it's supposed to do.
Upper bank is interesting for this approach because you're flying towards a mountain, it looks like. Short runway, too. With the really planet. Boy, you're going into the wall. It's also one of those runways where you get to go right to the end and your terminal is right there. I bet Southwest loves having that. That's why these airlines bid to try to get these hubs. It's a good spot to have. All right, just hit the five mile ring. Winds have shifted on us a little bit. It was a crosswind, now it's kind of, it's, I don't know. It's kind of a tail crosswind, real light though. Uh, it should be about three knots or so. The one thing I do wish this had was there's a little carrot you can move for the throttle when you're in the Zebo to align your physical throttle with the throttle in the plane. And for this one, it doesn't have that, so. When I turn off that auto throttle and I turn on my throttle, either it's going to be too much. The MC was a little bit too much. 1,000. Which can balloon you. Wanna let her speed get a little too high. Which it is. Hey, now we have a headwind. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is the wind increasing? You guys seeing this? Look at this. Look at the map display. We're at 40 knots. 50. 500. What is it doing? These are like hurricane. There's there's no way it's that windy here. That would be a hurricane. This is this is Burbank. Oh, it's good. It's got. It's pushing 80. It's pushing 8. Approaching minimums. Oh my god. Yeah, what am I going to do? Go around and then I, I'm just going to have the same thing? We're going to do it. Oh my god. It is slow. It's flying so slow. Ninety it's ninety-four knots. How high is it going to go? We're about to land this like a helicopter. One hundred. Wow. Fifty. Forty. 737 stole landing. 30. The windsock is giving off a different direction as well. This 20. makes no sense. 10. Wow. Look, Mom, no reversers. I guess we could use them anyway. Look at my airspeed, it still says 100 knots. That's what's indicating. This is weird. I don't know who to blame. This is Microsoft Lightsome's fault, I'm sure. But did you see that though? You see the windsock was extended completely the other way, but the wind indicated on the map display is we're flying into it, obviously. Um, I feel cheated. I don't have time to go back and do another flight. But what happens if I turn the weather off? Let me see.
Oh yeah. Definitely the live weather. I wish I thought to do that on approach. I don't know. I just was a. It was like happening at like four miles out. So I guess I was just so taken back by it happening. I didn't even think to kill the weather. Dang man, I'm sorry guys. I feel like I don't even. I didn't even get a true feeling of a landing because we we hovered into the touchdown zone. Well, I guess that'll make for funny footage to look back on on my my first flight. Uh, wow, you barely have time to get the APU running before you have to hit the terminal. Let's start that now. Oops, there goes landing lights, runway turn off, taxi, strobe. Let's head into our spot. This is Orbex Burbank, of course. Nice to have all the Southwest carts and a Southwest plane parked. I really like that. Yeah, that taxi's got to get fixed. Just a little too touchy. All right, well, we have made it. Let's hit that parking brake. Kill the engines. Fuel pump's coming off, let's get the left aft. Got that APU going. Get the hydraulics off. Isolation valve to open, I APU bleed on. Probe heat can come off. Let's, um... Let's take a look at the replay just for the hell of it. Maybe it'll be funny. Now, on the replay, the nose gear refused to come down, so I'm trying to hide that a little bit. But you can tell. Yeah. Here's where we, we stole in. The spoilers came up too, it's just the replay. It's so hard to get a clean replay. It looked at, I don't even think the flaps are in the correct position either. Uh, that's just, I don't know. They gotta get replaced, so uh, fixing this soon. But either way, that was the maiden voyage of uh, the PMDG 737 700. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It's the best I can do right now, not being able to get streams out and stuff, but uh, still trying to bring some flights. I'm gonna work through some of the other ones you guys requested. And um, hopefully our landing next time doesn't go like that. But I thank you guys for the continued support. Good having you. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments. See you guys on the next one.